A dazzling display of glass and steel graced the Missouri Botanical Garden this summer and drew huge crowds. Patrick Murphy takes us to the garden after dark, in itself a rare event, to see larger-than-life Chinese lanterns in all their splendor. In the Chinese calendar, 2012 is the year of the dragon. And in the summer of that year, there was no shortage of dragons on the grounds of the Missouri Botanical Garden. And not just dragons, but all things Chinese. As Lantern Fest, a company based in Zhigong, China, brought Lantern Festival Art by Day, Magic by Night to St. Louis. It's the first time the company has displayed its lantern making skills in any American city. One of the biggest challenges we've had with this exhibition is trying to explain to people what a lantern festival is because you don't see them in the United States. Unless you've been to Asia, you're not really familiar with it. And the first thing that comes to mind is that kind of beach ball sized paper, flimsy paper lantern. And this couldn't be further from that. These lanterns are gigantic installations. Some of the pieces are gonna be as tall as three stories. We have a welcoming dragon in our lot. When visitors come in, it's over 137 foot long. So these are really giant installations. It's almost, I, I almost liken it to like a parade float size of these really beautiful sets that are very detailed. 40 Chinese artists came to St. Louis and worked in the garden's parking lot for two months, constructing 26 separate lantern sets. Zhigong, China is known as the lantern capital of the world, where the complex and detailed craft of lantern making has been passed on in the most traditional manner. Basically, then, you know, this skill, they don't learn from any school or institute. They just pass down generation by generation. Yep. So in that particular small town that you know, we are living in, so this is a skill that you know, friends teach the other friends, or the parents you know, just teach the children. The garden's been conducting research with Chinese botanists for over 25 years, so there was already a strong relationship in place between St. Louis and China when the idea for the festival took shape back in 2009. So hosting a small village of Chinese lantern makers was not a problem. The garden has several apartments for our visiting researchers. We do scientific research all over the world. And uh, so we we're fortunate enough that we have that, so we're able to put a lot of the artisans up in the neighborhood. Um, they have their own chef with them. We had to think about food and that their diet is different than our traditional American diet. And uh, so, you know, a lot of behind the scenes work has gone into doing something like this for the first time. The whole process started in China as a team of engineers and graphic designers drew up plans for each individual installation so it would fit the specific landscape of the botanical garden, its hills, pathways, historic buildings, sculptures, and ponds. The Chinese artists who came to St. Louis worked from those technical plans, building the installations practically from scratch, drawing chalk outlines on the asphalt, then shaping by hand steel rods which formed two-dimensional pieces that were joined together to become three-dimensional forms for the lanterns. Pieces of brilliantly colored silk were stretched over the forms, bringing them to life. Most were wired internally for lighting. This beast, half dragon, half lion, was meticulously constructed from thousands of tiny medicine bottles filled with colored water. One of the major attractions, two giant porcelain dragons in front of the Climatron, consisted of more than 40,000 pieces of dishware tied together with kite string. Speaking of numbers, the display covered 17 acres of the garden. 72,000 feet of silk were used to cover the lanterns. 11,000 light bulbs illuminated the sets and one ton of rice was consumed by the artisans during the time they built the displays. The installations represented a wide variety of Chinese myths and symbols. Buddhas, terracotta warriors, spirits, lotus blossoms, and of course, lots of dragons. But even though the lights are out now and the sets dismantled, it's not quite the end. When the festival closed, parts of the set were sold to the public, so it's possible that someday, somewhere around town, we might encounter a small piece of lantern magic. <laughs>